Promises, not threats. First question came from my guy, Mark. He said, Hi, what's going on in Graven? Hope you and the fam are doing good. I have some questions and scenarios as well. Uh, how far do you think we are away from being an actual playoff caliber team? Well, uh, I think the Ravens, they are there already. They're certainly a playoff team. Now, as far as what they can do in the playoffs, that's to be determined. But I think as of right now, they are certainly a playoff caliber team. Uh, but he said, uh, Baltimore can be a competitive threat, but I feel disconfident in how we win because sometimes we got to rely on Lamar for a la miracle. LOL, love LJ8. I, I like that one. Uh, he said, it's like we squeak by some games or start slow. Some games I've seen or followed, I, I've seen other teams just magically end up in the red zone. I remember your Apple update analogy with NFL offenses. It's like they are getting faster and Baltimore is getting slower. Uh, with the team, we have holes, but it also looks like we just need some upgrades at positions. I just want to make promises, not threats. Ooh, I feel you on that one. I really do. Um, that and that was that was all last season. Well, a, a big majority of it. The Ravens will come out, and this is why the defense last year. I feel like they they got a lot of the blame. Um, and I feel like the defense. I know they were thirty second rank past something like that but i think that was more so toward the end of the season and it wasn't the beginning too because they ain't had a marcus peters and whatnot but anyway um with the defense i feel like they're uh they weren't as bad as people thought they were um because a lot of time people oh the late game collapses the giving up the fourth quarter leads and da da da, da. but if you recall, Ravens would start off every game just so slow well not every game but most games they start them off so slow and it's like they were taking so long to get into the flow of the game. And it was like, what is going on, man? And that would happen so often. And it would be so frustrating. Like, oh, okay, got a punt again. Oh, got a punt again. Oh, another punt. Oh, another punt. Oh, we got a field goal. Yeah, oh, another punt. And they they got to wake up so, a lot sooner. And then and the defense will be playing good most of the time. They'll be playing good. Be holding holding it down and, and holding out the opposing offense, but they can only do it for so long, especially in today's league. <laughs> like, they can only do it for so long. So, um, Ravens offense, they, they got to wake up. They got to wake up. And to help them wake up, y'all know how I feel. Y'all know what I think they should do. But anyway, uh, he said, with the draft coming up, who do you want to take at 14? I've been on a Devin Lloyd bandwagon for a while, but it's real hard because we can go in so many directions with wide receiver, cornerback, D-line, offensive line, linebacker. Who's really the best player available? Mm. If it was me, uh, I, I, I expect the Ravens to get somebody like I, I expect them to go defense first. Uh, whether it's Jordan Davis, uh, whether it's uh, I like McDuffie. I like him a lot. Um, whether it's Stingley. I don't think Stingley makes it to 14, though. Uh, whether it's Sauce Gardner, um, Kyle Hamilton, I don't know about that one. I, I would be very intrigued to see what the Ravens did if he was just sitting there and they were at 14. I would be very intrigued. I'd be like, hmm. Um, but they're going to have a lot of options, like you said. They they have so many different ways that they could go um, and sitting at 14. But if if it's like, it, oh, just depending on who would be there, man, I would be just, it's going to be a lot of shock. It's going to be a lot of surprise. Uh, then for some people, it's going to be like, ah, okay, I saw that coming. Um, that it all just depends. But I, I'm thinking uh, uh, either they go, they either go interior defensive line or they go edge or they go corner uh, in the first. I don't think they'll do anything unless they trade back up or they trade back. Um, that's the only way I think they possibly go anywhere else in the first. But I think first is definitely defense for them. Um, he said, uh, lastly, I noticed all the trade scenarios for DK Metcalf. I have ideas, but I want to step away from that. Uh, would you think Baltimore would consider trading Ronnie Stanley, Chuck Clark, or Gus Edwards? Um, Ronnie Stanley right now, no, uh, because the dead money is just way too much. Had things played out a little differently to where uh, they didn't pay him the contract, and then unfortunately he got hurt. Then I think there would have been a possibility there. Then I think they they move Orlando Brown Jr. over there, and they trade Ronnie Stanley. But oof, man, um, that's crazy how that I don't want to say worked out, but it's crazy just how it happened uh, with Ronnie Stanley. It's just crazy how everything went down with him. Um, hopefully he can be healthy. But oh, anyway, back to uh, 
the question, I, I do not think they will trade him because it's way too much dead money. I think the earliest they could possibly trade or release him would be uh, 2024. Uh, so they got, they got a wow. while. <laughs> uh, he said, Ronnie is a coin toss because who will pick up a hospital bill when they know they, have, they may have to pay it again because of his health? Mm. These players do have awesome value to the team, but they are replaceable as well. Mm. What are your thoughts? Hope my question wasn't too long. As always, love your content and look forward to your video. Shout out to you and your fam. Uh, have a blessed day and try to relax and enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah. You already know what time it is. I appreciate that, man. Stingley this Sauce Dad. Next question came from my guy, Daryl Davis. He said, what's up? How's the fam? I keep hearing a lot of people talk about if Stingley or Sauce are gone at 14, go away from cornerback. Andrew Booth is a raven. He might be the best cornerback in this draft, but the media is sleeping on him. If we could trade back, get an extra first or second, and then get Booth and a top wide receiver, what'd you think about that? I wouldn't be mad at that at all. I wouldn't be mad at that at all, not one bit, um, because they would be addressing a position of need and something that I talked about before when it comes to cornerback. Uh, right now, the Ravens, I think they got like about six million cap space. Um, so they, if they wanted to make more moves, or they're gonna they're gonna do something to get some more cap space, restructures, extensions, whatever. Uh, but as far as Marcus Peters, um, he has not been extended yet. There has been nothing with the Marcus Peters yet. Uh, we are waiting, seeing. Um, but as far as them drafting a corner, uh, just in case, because you know the business, it can break some hearts. But just in case Marcus Peters wasn't with the Ravens after this year. Then they would have somebody to step in there uh, and fill that role. Hopefully, that's not what happens with Marcus Peters. But stay ready, so you ain't gotta get ready, cause you just never know. Um, but then for them to get a corner, and, and that's obviously a need because cornerback is the quality drops off big time after those after the two starters. Uh, but as far as one of the top wide receivers too. Yeah, you, you know I'm on board with that one all day, too. Next question came from my boy j Dog. He said, hey, another question for you. What do you think about instead of going after DK, we went after D-Hop? Ooh. 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 Wow. I like that one. I wouldn't expect the Ravens to do it, but I, I, I love the idea. I love the thought of it. I love the possibility of it. Um, but I think uh, with the Cardinals, I'm not sure where they are right now. With the Kyler Murray. I'm not sure what's going on with them. Um, now, I did see the report that he's not going to the voluntary offseason program with the Cardinals right now. And that's fine because it's voluntary. That means it's not a requirement. I know so many fans, they try to get on the players when these players are not at voluntary stuff. But anyway, um, depending on where they are with Kyler Murray right now, uh, if the Cardinals are all in on him. Um, then they may want to try to salvage any relationship that there is with Kyler Murray. And by trading away his best wide receiver, that wouldn't be it. Um, so I, I would love it. Ooh, I would love it. But I just don't think it would ever happen. Mm. And let's let's go back to uh, the 2020 draft because that's when he got traded to the Cardinals, right? The, the 2020 draft, right before the 2020 draft. And because that's when it came out when the Ravens that, that said the Ravens tried. But they weren't successful in doing so. Anyway, let's, let me keep reading before I start crying those tears again. He said, Kyler Murray wants money. And we can take off some money from Cardinals by taking his contract on. Expensive, but worth it. Boom. Also, I think they are ready for a rebuild in the offense around Murray. Um, well, ah. See, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, it, it just depends on how, how in they are when it comes to Kyler Murray. Um, if you... Like, because that would be like sort of going backwards. Like, all right, Kyler Murray, we're all in on you, but you know what? Let's trade away your best receiver. So that's that's why I don't think it's going to go down. Next question came from Echo. He said, do you think if Lamar hasn't re-signed at the end of this season, uh, should we franchise tag him? Well, they're going to have to figure something out. Uh, whether it's franchise tag or they just they give him a deal that he can't refuse. But a lot rides on this season. Um, his price tag rides on this season. Because, uh, of course, you already know it's going up, but he can make it shoot through the roof if he just gets back to doing what we know uh, he can do. Um, so this season is going to be very exciting. Um, but I, one thing that I hope is that Lamar isn't overthinking everything because he knows like he's going to get paid. He knows he's going to get paid. 
But how much he get paid, a lot of that depends on him. Uh, so I just hope he isn't out there overthinking when he's playing, overthinking when he's going through everything, um, because we wouldn't want that to hinder his game. Uh, I don't think it will, um, but I just know that from what we've seen, a lot of times the Ravens, uh, the, the Ravens coaching staff, the Ravens with like Lamar, a lot of times they can let that outside noise in. And they they let you know in multiple ways that they hear it. They hear what's being spoken about them. So if people keep talking about and bringing up the contract throughout this whole season, which they will, they're going to do it. Um, I would just hope that he can block all that out. Just keep all that out and just take care of his business like we know he can. And then the business will take care of the business. Let's get into it. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So team, keep it clean. Welcome to another episode of NFL Questions from Subs, where you can ask me any question and we answer it in a video like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for our Team Keep It Clean patrons. Y'all can send it directly on Patreon. Uh, if you want to join the Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Please don't feel like you have to because you already know that you don't. Uh, if you don't want to, you ain't got to, and that's perfectly fine i still love y'all i appreciate y'all we've already had some great questions to start us off let's see how everybody else follows with the questions to finish next question came from my guy nick J. he said ain't graven first time question asker here first saw your videos from your marcus williams reaction and been hooked ever since i checked hourly uh for b-wags updates he said rest in peace <laughs> I appreciate it, man. He said, uh, with the draft looming, I'm getting excited. Daydreaming about potential game changers to take the team back to their pre-injury glory. <laughs> oh, the good old days, huh? Uh, here's some scenarios I've thought of. Which would you be most excited about? All right, Ravens trade up. Uh, they trade up. I'm over here reading the name and the word trade at the same time. They trade up for a Kayvon or a Sauce, but potentially lose next year's first rounder. Okay, let's see the next scenario. Uh, Ravens trade back and get two firsts from KC or something and get more quantity, slightly less quality. Um, It depends on if, are you talking about like slightly less quality in the first round since they will be later first round picks or just slightly less quantity on the back end of the draft? Um, next scenario, he said Ravens use the pick in a in a package for a DK Metcalf or a Debo. I'm assuming this is your hope. <laughs> hey, you're a smart man. Um, but let me see what the other options are. He said number four, they stick uh, where they are and grab either Jordan Davis. Oh, Trent McDuffie, who we were just talking about, really like him. Devin Lloyd, Linda Baum, Karloftis, to name a few decent pickups. Mm. Personally, if we're not going to do something crazy like trading up for Kayvon, I like McDuffie to finish our... Oh, see, look at that. He, okay, he, we on the same page. He said, I like McDuffie to finish our no-fly zone and hope to get a day two edge and a vet receiver to take some pressure off of our future stars. Thanks for all the hard work and keeping the flock up to date. Appreciate this. This was some fun scenarios. Um, as far as what will be my favorite, uh, excluding the, the, the trade for a DK or a Debo, um... I would probably say dear, 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 dear. Mm. either two or four. Two was Ravens trade back and get two firsts from Kansas City or something and get more quantity, slightly less quality. Now, um, the quality could still be very high, especially with it being first round picks. It's still... The top, these will be two of the top 32 players in the draft. And you get to pick from two of them in the first round. Uh, so I think the quality will still be very high. Now, your options, of course, will be a little bit less, uh, but the quality will still be high. Um, and depending on how they use them, obviously. But And as long as they went and got guys that would make an immediate impact, like they did last year. Last year, first round pick, and Eric DaCosta, since he's been a GM, the first round picks, they've been very impactful. They have been very impactful. So it was Hollywood Brown, Patrick Queen, uh, Rashad Bateman, and Dafe away. But they've, they've been very impactful. Now, after that, it's a little bit shaky. Um, but 
if they did that, oh, cool. Uh, and then number four, it said, stay where they're at and grab uh, either Davis, McDuffie, Lloyd, Lindebaum, Carl Loftus, to name a few. Yeah, and that they could do that and then just go get their wide receiver in a second. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all fun options. But, yeah, two and four are probably my favorites. Speaking of trading for a wide receiver from the Seahawks, next question came from Tanja. She said, hey, Raven, how are you and the family? Haven't sent in the question lately. I noticed. Uh, but I sure have been listening. I appreciate that. Uh, Ravens fans have been requesting DK Metcalf. I think that is a reach. He would be too costly, and he is a bit of a diva. I can see him demanding the ball too much and catching attitudes. That's that's what good wide receivers do. That's what they do. Because, hey, like, the some of the best wide receivers, not all of them, of course, but some of the best wide receivers, they want the ball because they want to make stuff happen. They want to make plays. So, that hey, it's part of the risk, but... When you see the result, you be, oh, okay, cool. That's why you wanted the ball so much, because you could ball. But anyway, uh, she said, however, no one has thought about Tyler Lockett. When I watched the Seahawks, he was getting the ball more than Metcalf because he is a better route runner. He is. He's fast. He's speed. He got some good speed. He got some good hands. Um, and Tyler Lockett is straight. I was just talking to my guy Josh about this a couple couple weeks ago. Um, I would I would just rather a bigger frame guy, though. I, I, I feel like we have... Um, a lot of smaller frame wide receivers, and that would just be adding to another one. And Tyler Lock is not bad at all. He's not. But I would just rather a bigger frame guy for the jump ball, for that the, the catch radius. Uh, so the, the window for Lamar to, to get it to him would be bigger. Um, I, I would just rather that. Tyler Lock, ain't bad, though, but I would rather that. Uh, she said Tyler Lockett doesn't have that deep, <laughs> deep mentality like DK, and he probably wouldn't demand so much money. Uh, I don't know why no one is asking if he wants to leave the Seahawks. I think he would fit perfectly with the Ravens. Yeah, so I he he would be straight. Um, but yeah, like I said, I, me personally, I would rather a, a bigger frame wide receiver because I feel like a bigger frame wide receiver uh, with some speed, with some good hands, with that just a playmaker. I feel like he would complement Hollywood and complement a Rashad Bateman and complement a Mark Andrews that much more.